Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 9. <clears throat> In this lecture, we're gonna talk about the convolution. So, um, we can start from uh, input system and output figure here. So you have an input x, and uh, when input goes into the system h, and uh, it will give you the output y. And here y can be expressed with the multiplication of x and h here. Um, this is basically the what convolution is. Huh? And the convolution starts from the decomposition of the input signal into a sum of shifted impulses. So xi will be xk and delta i minus k. So this is the decomposition of the x, the input signal, into the sum of the uh, time-shifted and scaled impulses. And the system has impulse response. So then um, let's say that you have an impulse like this. So this is the impulse function. And impulse function is given to the system. It's applied to the system here, h. Then it will give you the response. Something like this. And it's called the impulse system, impulse response. And uh, we use typically the, the symbol H. So when the, whenever there is a hit and the impulse like this, the system will react with this response. And uh, we assume that this, the system is causality and linear time invariant system. And causality means that they are, um, if there's an effect, then there should be some cause. So without any cause or without any input, the system doesn't behave. System doesn't show any uh, output. So, if you have an input and you have whatever the output is, then you have some output. That's called the causality, so cause and effect. And linear means that the uh, um, sum of the input and it gives it the uh, sum of the outputs together. So it's going to be the same. Huh? And the time invariant means that the, when you do the impulse, when you measure the impulse response today and when you measure the impulse response tomorrow, or yesterday, those impulse response should be the same. That means that it doesn't change with time. So the time-shifted causes um, will give you the time-shifted effects. So the, actually, because it's a linear system, I can sh say that the, um, let's say there's x1 and it gives you the y1. And when there's x2, and it gives the y2, and then x1a plus y1, by1, then it gives you a y1 plus b y2. I'm sorry, it's x2. It should be x2. So even though it's scaled by a and x, a and b, and it's summed up x and y, uh, x and x, x1 and x2 terms are summed up, still you get the superposition rule is the, is valid. So a times y1 plus b times y2. And this is valid when the system is linear. So general superposition principle is valid in the LTI system. So then we can express this um, convolution mathematically yi is delta k x i h i minus k or in matrix y is x multiplication of the h. Okay. So this is what convolution is. 
Okay, um, let's try and do some pencil and paper uh, type of uh, calculation here. Um, let's calculate the convolution operation using this input signal and xi and uh, hi, which is the impulse response. And when you express this one as an array, x transpose of the matrix, x transpose, the input signal is 1, 3, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, right? 1, 3, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, when i increases from 0 to 5. Huh? And here, h, impulse response, is 0, 2, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, okay? So then, um, so we're going to have, start from the k is 0. When k is 0 here, as shown in here, and this is the response, right? The, uh, the input, 1, 3, minus 1, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0. So then, when k is 0, um, x, 0 will be 1. So this one, right? When i is 0. And then, and we can multiply this one. So x, 0, h, i minus 0 will be, you can multiply this 1 to these functions, right? So then what happens? When i is 0, 1 times 0, so it's 0. When i is 1, so then it's 2. And 2 times 1, so that's going to be 2 here. And when i is 2, so that's here, right? 2 minus 1. And 1 time minus 1 will be minus 1 here. And then uh, 1 time, so when i is 3, it's 0, and 0, and 0. So whatever you multiply, 0, and it's 0, 0. 0, 0, 0. So then this will react like this. It's just like the same with the impulse response. Huh? h, because the, uh, the value is 1, x0 is 1. Huh? So then when k is 1, so now it's the same, but xk, so xk is um, 3, right? So that's going to be here, so 1, 3, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, and it's going to be this one, right? So then x, 1 time h i minus 1 will be the response that we want to get. So then it's, be, uh, it's been delayed a little bit. So when i is 0, it's going to be h minus 1, that's 0. And when i is 1, so then that's um, 0, so another. So h0 is 0, right? When i is 2, so then this becomes h1 when it's 2, right? So it's h1, h1 is, is it? 2, right? So 3 times 2, that's going to be 6. Right? 1, 2. And then, when i is 3, so h 
i minus 1 will be h sub 1. No, at h sub 2, that's minus 1. So it's going to be minus 1 times minus 1 here. And h, when it's 4, um, h i minus 1 will be h sub 4. h sub 4 is 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes. Right? And then we can do another calculation. Uh, when k is 2, so then x2 will be, how much is it? x2 will be minus 1. That's here. Right? So then here, jun, 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 and that's k0, k1, k2. So then x2 times h i minus 2 will be uh, drawn in here. So then let's draw it. x2 and it's going to be 0 when i is 0 because h minus 2 is 0. h minus 1 will be 0. h 0 will be 0. And 0, 1, 2, 3. When i is 3, when i is 3, it becomes, this becomes 2, so it's going to be minus 2. Right? So, like this. And when i is 4, it becomes h2, that's 2, so 2 times no, minus 1, minus 1 times minus 1, so it's 1 here. And then when it's 5, uh, 5 minus 2 is h3, so 0, 1, 2, 3, so it's 0. Right? And when k is 3, um, x3 is 1. 0, 1, 2, 3 is 0. k is 4, x4 four is 0. k5, five, x5 five is 0. Right? So it's going to be all 0. So when you then, when you multiply this and this, so this one and this one, and this response, then it will be the convolutional operation shown in here. Right? So all of the sum will look like this. And when i is 0 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And let's sum up all of this. Huh? When i is 0 here, when i is 0, 0 plus 0 plus 0. So it should be, I'm going to use the red one, 0 here. And when i is 1, 2 plus 0 plus 0. So it should be 2, 2. When i is 2, minus 1 plus 6 plus 0 so it should be 5 4 6 here 5 and when i is 3 0 plus minus 1 is it minus 1 yep minus 1 No, it's not minus 1. And this is minus 2. 
let me check this one again. So this is three times. So this should be minus three. Should be more deeper. Oh, sorry about that. So then minus three plus minus two. So it should go down to minus five. Right. And then I can end up i is 4, 0, i is 4, 0, and i is 4, it's, I think it's 1. So then it's going to be a 1. And then it becomes, so when i is 5, it's 0. So the impulse response will be 0 to 5 minus 5, 1, and 0. Right? So this is the convolution sum, and uh, this is when you operate the xi times hi. Okay, um, so this is the basic concept of the convolution, and uh, the, the concept is that um, when you decompose your x signal into shifted, time shifted, and scaled impulses, and you multiply the impulse response to the uh, each um, impulse, and then scale it and time shift it, and together they uh, you can. Uh, combine and sum up everything together. So then the equation will become like this. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so there was the uh, exercise to get the idea of the, what the convolution is. And then how can we determine the uh, impulse response? Impulse response um, of a system. For example, let's say you have a building like this. Then, can we, so let's say we have um, accelerometer here at the top, measuring the vibration. And when we hit it with the hammer, does it work? No, because the impact given by this hammer will be, will not be flat will not be impulse. It's going to be something like this. So this is not impact. Well, it's not impulse. Right? So then what about this idea? One idea is that you can put on uh, a certain mass and make it steady and then you can suddenly remove it. So then the load or the excitation will be a steady state for a certain period of time and then you suddenly remove it so it becomes the zero when it's the load. Right? So this is the step function and uh, the response will be like this, this black one, right? this one. So you have a static deformation and when you remove it and this mass will go up so that it's gonna jump up like this and then oscillate right and because we apply this step function then we can differentiate the input right bit by bit when we get the derivative of this input then it becomes the impulse so then you can get the impulse response. So then this will become zero when you get the derivative with respect to the, um, the time here. Then it will show this kind of impulse response. So you can see uh, because it's a uh, um, no, first order of der derivative is shifted by um, half a period, like cosine and sine. When it's the cosine, when you 
differentiate becomes the sine. Huh? Okay. Um, this will be the, um, the, the homework, and uh, it will be included in the homework. And assume it, assume, so you assume that you have a single degree of system, single degree of freedom system, and with the damper and the, the spring. And here then the age, the impulse response, how do we get the impulse response? And if you go or if you find some uh, dynamic structural dynamic book, textbook, and it will give you the mathematical formulation for the age, impulse response, the function of the M, K, and damping ratio and the omega. And then express as a discrete form. And then find the R square record, any record. And delta t should be the same with the, um, the one here and here in the discrete form. Then program the convolution operator and verify it and compute the response output when you give the uh, earthquake as an input here to the system. So the FR, the resonant frequency, the system resonant frequency uh, you can change the system resonant frequency 1 Hz or 0.1 Hz or damping or 10% and 1% the total four cases. Okay, uh, so the next topic is the variation of convolution operation. So it's similar to what convolution is. Um, cross correlation is <clears throat> uh, people widely use it to identify the similarities between two signals. Uh, let's say that we have a, a steel rod here. Could be a steel or concrete rod like this. And you have a receiver at X location and you have another receiver at the Y location. And when you hit it, one end of this steel rod with a hammer, X receiver will acquire this kind of signal. And Y receiver will also occur a signal, but it's a bit a little bit delayed, right? By this much. But it will be the same, similar shape. Huh? It could be a little bit noisy. So then, if we do the co cross correlation, we can find the time difference between this signal. So how do we do that? Um, let's explore uh, the cross correlation with these two signals. Very simple. X is 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And the Y is a little bit delayed. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. In the I axis. Huh? So then when K is 0, what happens? When k is 0, um, c c 0, x y is some i and minus 1, x i time y i. So when i is 0, you just multiply and this and this, right? And this and this, 0, this and this, 0, this and this, 0, 0, 0 times 0 and 0, 0 times 1 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0, 0 times 0 is 0. So summation of all of this 0 will be 0. Right? When k is 1, so cc1 times x, y, that's another summation of summation from i to n minus 1, and xi times y, i plus 1. Right? So then uh, this a little bit shifted. So now when i is 0, it's going to be this one, right? So, and this correlates. Like this. So still, you're multiplying 0 to a certain sum value. 0 times 0, 0 times 0, 0, 1 times 0, 1 times 0. Um, 0 times 1, 0 times 1, and 0 times 0. Okay. 
so this will be still 0. When k is 2, what happens? So now, each bit, you can say it's now 0 times 0 here, 0 times 0 here, 1 times 0 here, uh, 1 times 1, and 0 times 1, 0 times 0. So it's going to be 1. Right? And k is 3, c is 3, x, y is n minus 1, x i times y i plus 3 will be, um, if you do that, it's going to be 2, because now it's been shifted by um, 3 times, right? So then, here, 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 goes to 0, and 0, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 0, 1, 1, so it's you know, kind of synced now, together, so then the summation will be 2. And when k is 4, cc4, x, y will be 1 k is 5, c c 5, x, y will be 0. So then when you plot it, the re when you plot the result at k axis, um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and y axis is c c k x y. So then 0, 0, 1, 2, 1, 0. So the result is um, k max at Find the k that gives you the maximum ccxy, that's k3, right? And k3 times delta t with the travel time in here, right? From here to here, right? So you know the travel time, delta t, and you will know the length of the uh, length between the receivers, two receivers. Then you will get the travel time, huh? so velocity will be L over delta t. So uh, using this cross correlation, you can find the arrival time and the cross correlation, the mechanism or the theoretical, the fundamental um, mechanism is like this. You're shifting the y signal, the one signal by one by one until their multiplication becomes the biggest, the, the maximum value, right? So this and k is 3 is the one that um, the signal becomes matched. Um, what happens if you have negatively polarized signal? So before, x is this one, and y is, the, their polarity is reversed. When you do CC, the cross correlation using this equation, and you get this kind of a negative value. Right? So then, if you want to remove this kind of effect of polarity, you can get the absolute value for the cross correlation and find the maximum that, um, you know, find the k that gives you the maximum, this absolute cc, xy. Um, <clears throat> so, and last topic is the autocorrelation. And autocorrelation is the same with the cross correlation, but you use the, just the one signal. So not two signal, just the one, x and x. And this is to find the internal periodicity. So if there's some periodically repeating signal in your um, acquired signal, in your, in your signal, then you can find the internal period, period. So for example, um, your 
measuring the um, <clears throat> wave at the end of one rod and you're applying the uh, impact at the other end so the wave goes back and forth so it goes here um, first it comes here so that's this signal and then when it arrives to the other end it flips back and then it goes to the other hand so it now is here and then it goes here so you can see it's because it's free free and it flips and now this is the first signal comes in and then now flips and now it flips again right so plus minus and plus right so then <clears throat> um, how can we measure the velocity of this steel rod by looking at maybe we can just uh, find the peak and peak and measure the peak to peak of the t right if it's very noisy then it will be difficult to do that so then how do we do it we can do the order correlation so we have a one signal this and we have another signal the same one and we are just shifting it and do the convolution or the multiplication and get the summation of it and finding the maximum um, AC value and find the <clears throat> K that gives you the maximum AC value. Right? So when we do that, if we're shifting this X signal um, with K, when the K is zero, it was the, the biggest signal. And when k is 180, it was the negative, the, the maximum negative value, right? If it's, uh, if you get the uh, FC value, it's gonna be the another maximum. So it means that the 180 is here, and from here to here, 180 is the um, time interval. So the delta t will be what? 180 times delta t. So this will be the uh, sampling interval. This is the arrival time, right? And another one here. When the when this signal arrived, uh, this signal arrived somewhere here, three sixty. So you can say that the, if the velocity is. Um, 2L over delta T because it has to travel one by one on the one one travel or one trip and uh, another trip back so 2L times delta T arrival so then 2L over 180 times delta T it will give you the, the velocity okay thank you um, thank you for listening uh, that's the end of lecture 9.